Hello, welcome to Conversations. I'm Mike May, and tonight we have with us Tom Walker, a local guy. Thank you welcome for guys. joining You're us. <laughs> now, where are you from? Where were you born? Hartford, Connecticut, Hartford Hospital. Okay, well, me, me too, but now where, where, did, where did you grow up? Well, we lived in Wethersfield. Our family lived in Wethersfield, uh, and we moved to Ellington. Okay. Um, I'm not even sure why. <laughs> Um, to another suburb, a little little further out, a little more country. But anyway, 1964. So now, so you were about how old when you moved to Ellington? I was in fourth grade, and, and we moved in spring of uh, 64. Mm -hmm. And then, but we commuted. I commuted the last oh. few weeks uh -huh. rather than, and so uh, finished out fourth grade mm -hmm. in Wethersfield, and then Ellington. ready to rock. Uh, in fifth grade. Okay, and now, and, and now, from where have you worked your whole life? Almost your whole. Life. Well, I mean, I haven't strayed too far. Um, I'm actually going somewhere with this, believe it or not. Yeah, no, I haven't <laughs> strayed too far. I, I'm trying to think of the first job of if any of them have any particular interest. Well, I, I worked at the uh, Ellington Library, Hall Memorial Library. Okay. As a junior, yeah. junior in high school, age 16, and then I had a couple little jobs here and there. Um, my first full-time job was out of high school. I didn't go to college. Mm -hmm. And I worked at uh, Rex Lumber in South Windsor. On South okay. Ave. All right. And simple job, unloading freight cars one stick at a time. And where were you living grunt, at? Grunt work. <laughs> well, I, at that point, I mean, I, right out of high school, I lived in a couple of different places, local apartments. In, in what uh, town? Uh, Vernon. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, no, like I said, I didn't stray. Okay. Um, now, wh where do you live now? Ellington. Ellington. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, I live, I never actually checked it exactly, but mm. probably two miles from where, where we lived, um, mm. you know, when I grew up, okay. which was fourth grade through, through high school. Okay. Now, you've had, you, you said you had a couple other jobs before you. Yeah, I, I once a couple summers uh, while I was in high school, I applied for a job. It was when they used to put ads in the local paper mm -hmm. for what? you know maybe they still do. I don't pay much attention. But when there used to be local papers, right? Well, I think it was a JI. I think okay. it was the, the I think it was called that. But anyhow, uh, there was an ad in the in the paper for hardworking young college kids, mm -hmm. men. It was not. Uh, it was just a, for males. And uh, so it didn't say what it was. Uh -oh. So I applied, and it was another one of those grunt work jobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe it was between my, I don't know, maybe between my junior and senior year. Anyway, so there was four or five of us that got hired, and I was the only one that lasted. Oh. And the other guys <laughs> were college guys. Oh. But it was too, uh, I don't know why they left. I don't know if it was the pay. I think it was too hard. Mm. So what were you doing? We were cleaning uh, big heating systems for like schools and uh, I don't know, I don't think we did any hospitals, but big, you know, maybe car dealerships that had, uh, I guess it was hot water systems. And anyway, they, it was the summertime, so they'd, oh, heat, up, they'd heat everything up and um, uh, we'd go in cleaning out the ductwork and depending on whether it was hot air or water or whatever, I don't even hardly remember. I just, all I remember was you got filthy. I was just going to say, oh, yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You wore a suit, you wore a hat, you wore goggles, mask, stuff on your feet. Real dirty you job. you looked like you were in a coal mine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Besides the fact that it was physically hard, it was physically gross, mm -hmm. dirty, mm -hmm. and hot. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I can imagine. So it was just, you mm -hmm. know. Now, Real work. Yeah, yeah. Now, I think that we all are, owe you, in a way, a, a debt of gratitude because now, what, what was your longest term job? Oh, well, I, I went to work for what ended up being my future father in law uh -huh. in 1974. Mm -hmm. In fact, I left the Rex Lumber on mm -hmm. a Friday and started working for my future father in law on mm. the following Monday. Mm -hmm. So I've been, you know, I worked uh, and for septic service. Skip, okay. Skip septic service. So it was a local station. I, I'm assuming maybe <laughs> some of the um, some of the people watching would well, have heard of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, again, that's a, a, an extremely necessary. Yeah. Now, that's one of the best things about it. 
Well, yeah, it's kind of provided, provided a, a service that people needed. Yeah, you know, that's uh, a lot of people needed. Uh, it's kind of hard to outsource that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you don't outsource. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so term. what did you do? Well, well, so what's the I, job? You I, wake up in the morning. And yeah, yeah. I started out. <clears throat> they had a they had a guy pumping tanks. There was one. There was only four of us, I think, when I started. Mm -hmm. uh, again, my who the, is Pete Skipper was the owner. Mm -hmm. He had a son also named Peter, huh. um, who was actually at the time running the jobs, running the company, and mm -hmm. the old man was just a, a working there. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a unique dynamic oh, because he owned the company, but he didn't, he didn't, uh, he wasn't the boss per se. So he was doing the physical, he was going yeah. on. Okay. Yeah. So when I started, uh, we had one guy who was running the hunt. Did you ever hear the phrase, the honey wagon? Yeah. 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 Well, okay. You know, pumping out tanks. And then I was on a crew installing systems. Mm -hmm. um, we did other things, you know, some other excavating type work. Besides just putting in septic systems, we did sewer work and drainage work, and but primarily, so you know, you had excavating equipment and uh, operating a dump truck, and mm -hmm. definitely uh, operating what they call the pine handle, the shovel. Oh, oh, yeah. P and H was a company that made excavators, built excavators, mm -hmm. um, but the P and H I ran was a pine handle. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't it? I didn't run. We didn't have an excavator per se. We had what they call a backhoe loader. Okay, so yeah. Front bucket, and then on the back was your your digging apparatus. Well, again, so this you know, you did drainage work and um, excavating and yeah. Well, septic, sewer. septic system, right? Sewer work is in the ground. Septic systems are in the ground. Um, in fact, what's called subsurface sewage disposal. It's a mm -hmm. way to get rid of the. Uh, uh, Effluent. Yeah, the effluent is the, <laughs> is the word, right, in, in, uh, in the ground. So there was, I, at that point, I just did what I was told, but, it, you know, somebody's got to design the systems. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that happened later on. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. So, again, we all, it's, it's things like this that we take, we know, so sometimes we take for granted. Oh, sure. And people just, you know, live their lives, but it's right. people who... What did you call it? The pine handle? The pine handle. That's what we, I just called yeah. it because it was, it was just kind of kidding around because yeah. of P and H, as I said, they, they, oh, made, oh, they I made all right. Big oh, oh, okay. And, the the and, pun. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, right. I mean, you know, sometimes you had equipment and mm -hmm. sometimes you just, yeah. you know, right. the old fashioned way of did like the Egyptians and the, oh, great. You know, the guys that built the pyramid. I don't think they had hydraulics or anything mechanical. They had you know. aliens. Right. Took care. Yeah, right. <laughs> Right. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll continue. That. Okay, we'll be, we're going to have to take a short break now, and we'll be back in just a minute. Thank you. Okay, thank you for coming back. We're here with Tom Walker, who's telling us about his very necessary work. He's done all his life in the area, and we all owe him and the crew a debt of gratitude that we can live healthy and drink clean water and our houses don't fall down. Yeah. Now, if you didn't do, okay, you, you did this kind of work your whole life. If, if you didn't do this, like what other work? <clears throat> So I wish I could have, you know, yeah. it would have been nice to do, you know, right. blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, I, I, I'll make a comment here. So I, I've heard people talk about, uh, you know, the hopes and dreams and, mm -hmm. and for the future and making plans. And, of course, if you go to college, mm -hmm. you got to pick a major and you know. figure stuff out and try to get a job in whatever you major in. Anyhow, I, I think my hope, and my dream was to make it through the day. Oh. <laughs> I, I can't really recall, I, didn't, I don't feel like I even had the ability to project too far out into the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, I was into uh, music, 
my father played the piano mm -hmm. reasonably well. It was a hobby, but he, you know, he was mm -hmm. he, he was into it. Um, but I never took piano lessons. I never took any kind of lesson. But I was into rock and roll, like a lot of us were. Mm -hmm. You know, I had those moments. Uh, <laughs> sitting around on a Sunday evening watching the Ed Sullivan show and the British invasion and mm -hmm. all of that. So we I just dated ourselves with yeah. the Ed Sullivan show, but yeah. oh, there I am. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I would have liked to have been a drummer in a rock and roll band. Drummer? Yeah, really? I, I would have picked a drummer. If, really? If did, I, you ever, did you ever play drums? I you? horsed around. Uh -huh. I, I played the drums like people play the air guitar. Oh. Okay. <laughs> no. And, um, and of course, you know, we did the clubbing and so you're dancing and that's, you got to have a little rhythm to mm -hmm. get out on the dance floor. Uh, did you ever perform with a band or? No. Oh, no, but it, nope, that, that, nope. it was, uh, I don't, we, do you call that a pipe dream? I don't know what you call it, yeah. but it was, uh, you know. The, something, the, you know, something you would have liked. Yeah, I, I don't think I had the confidence to pursue it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was part of the problem. Mm -hmm. um, so my father was white collar. Mm -hmm. I think I've mentioned it to you. Oh, that's before. right. He was, yeah. um, he was a law librarian. Yeah, and yeah. right in downtown Hartford. Right, right. state libraries right across from the Capitol. Yeah. So he did that. And my, my mother had, uh, she's got a whole story, which, you know, she was born in 1925 in Nashua, New Hampshire. And um, anyway, she went to college for a couple of years in Berea in Kentucky. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And... Uh, but she was trying to do it on her own and couldn't afford it and ended yeah, up coming yeah. back to New England and got a job. No. Um, yeah. But she never got a degree. But, you know, they both were readers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I don't think I've, for, they were, I don't think I spent any time thinking about being a white collar guy. It just, I, I, I like being outside. Yeah, I was just going to yeah. say some people, because yeah. um, I, like I used, to, I used to teach high school, and there was a guy who was a uh, uh, one of the custodians. And even when he was standing still, he was moving right. because he was always. So to say maybe to him, you know, here sit at this desk for eight hours. I think he would have, yeah. he would have uh, exploded. So. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, right. We're all cut out for different things. I, I just. Uh... But, one, but I don't, I, I have a tendency not to quit something that I start without a really, really good reason. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe some people quit because of the money, and maybe it's just not something that they, but I just, I don't know. I just always have felt if I'm going to do something different, I have to have a really, really good reason. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so. Now you, did you leave the company? or uh, Nope, uh, nope. I, so I ended up. My future wife, because I mentioned that the owner was my future yeah. father-in-law. Well, she was, when I started, she was only in, still in high school. Mm -hmm. And she worked after school in the office. Oh, okay. So that's how I, essentially how I met her. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and of course, as they say, the rest is history. But um, we you ended married up, the boss's daughter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had five of them. Five daughters? Five daughters. Yeah. Oh, good grief. Two, two, son, two sons and five daughters, a good Catholic family. Oh, so there was a, oh, seven kids. Seven kids. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. good grief. Oh. Yeah. And what was the, what was the question? Again? I, forgot, I, forgot I just got, question. I get the, um, let's see. You. Oh, I, what, how, what, how. So what, so what are you doing? Yeah. yeah you you yeah, worked okay, for them so for. I started in 74 mm -hmm. and then uh, myself and another son-in-law bought my father-in-law out. We, that, oh, we, we made an arrangement to, to purchase the business from him in 1978. Oh, so you bought Skipper's? So we bought it, yeah, oh, okay. in 1978. And two oh, of wow. us, neither one of us knew, well, we definitely did not know anything about business. Mm -hmm. You know, we could do the jobs that we did. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, a, that was an interesting thing. But uh, so anyway, we, so we were partners um, until 2004. And I approached him to see if he was interested in selling to me. His, his, oh. It was an S Corp, which basically we were stockholders, but mm. it was essentially a partnership. Yeah. And um, so in 2005, we signed the paperwork mm -hmm. and I bought him out. Oh. And then 
uh, might as well fast forward a little bit. So that was 2005, and then in, in 2014, I sold the business to a, a nephew, mm -hmm. own family. I was just going to say. It's typical with these small businesses, yeah. you know. So 2014, I sold the business to my nephew, and then I worked for him for four years, and 2017 was my last year. So that was 39 years. Well, it's more than that, right? It's 26, 43 years. 43 years. So it's 26, oh, 74 my, to 2000. Oh, for 74. I was thinking yeah. of 78 when yeah. you, when you. Yeah, well, right. Yeah. As far as ownership, correct. Oh, but you worked for them for 43 years. 43 years. My goodness. You slacker, why can't you? Yeah. You should have stuck it out. Well, it, I mean, it, you know, back <laughs> no, in the I'm day, being, that I'm was being more obnoxious. Com no, yeah, I know no, you are. Right, but I'm yeah, saying right. back in the day, that no, was yeah. not that unusual, but yeah. now people don't do anything for 43 years yeah. now. Good. Especially stay married. Yeah. Mm, right? Yeah, no, that, that's too bad. Yeah. No, but that was, so for all these decades, because again, I've lived in the area, I've seen, you know, the skipper's trucks go right. by right. and I drive extra careful because I thought, right. I don't yeah. want to have an accident right. Right. with that. You know, because I go, you know, they're doing, you know, an unnecessary job. So you were the owner right. for all, all that right. time. Okay. Right. All right. Well, okay. I didn't like the color, but the color worked. The, you, well. You know, the, light green, <laughs> the, the yellow lettering, yeah. it's... Um, it stands out, you right? Know, you know, that's right. the whole idea of putting your name on the truck. Is right. You want yeah. to stand out. But yeah. In fact, my my brother-in-law liked the color, and I didn't. Mm -hmm. But I think he liked it for the right reason. Yeah. It, yeah. Because it was it was noticeable. Something and, that. Uh, right. True. Yeah. Something that. Something that said. Now, has did that business change over the decades? Oh, it changed a lot. Yeah, it changed a lot. It, it changed. Well, equipment and tools have changed. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's a regulated business. Okay. It's regulated from the safety standpoint. It's regulated from the actual work that you do. Um, when I first started, it was a little more, not fly by night, but <laughs> a lot of contractors did what they wanted to do. Hmm. You know, and, and uh, that's not something you want to mess around with. No, <laughs> no. You, I mean, there are, there, there's standards, there's technical standards, again, put hmm. out by the state hmm. of, of what you have to do and how you have to do it and materials that you use, whether it's pipe or sand or stone. I mean, hmm. it just like everything, it evolved. Mm -hmm. And um, so it still was hard work, but it, it definitely changed in terms of the technology. And, uh, and in some ways, it became easier on the physical side of things, but it was still work. Mm -hmm. Still had to have a shovel. Every truck had to yeah. have a shovel. Yeah, okay. Still, still doing that. Yeah. I heard about uh, one guy, he was living in, like, the Midwest, and people were having a terrible problem with um, prairie dogs because they you know, dig holes, undermine right. things. The machines would fall, and people would get hurt. And they, said, what, what can, and they tried, like, gassing them, and well, then that goes in the soil and this and that. And then this one guy, and um, this is what I read, he was vacuuming, and he thought, he had like a, hmm, what if you got a big vacuum tube and suck put it the and, the, and suck the prairie? And at this end, if you had like a big fan, shall we say, so when the prairie dog came in, when it got to the truck, there wouldn't be any more prairie dog. Right. And uh, it was quick. And they didn't put any chemicals or anything in the soil, so um, he came up with that. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, those critters can do, if you saw, I don't know how many of the audience have, have seen, um, what's the movie with Bill Murray, Caddyshack. Oh, okay. They, they had a problem with gophers okay. in a, in a uh, golf course. So maybe that inspired yeah. him. Yeah. Now, okay, now, in this, did you ever have, is there like an incident or a day that stands out, oh, one time... Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Oh, boy, that day. Yeah. Well, I would say we had quite a few. <laughs> I'm trying to think of one that might stand out. Um, you know, sometimes, well, today, and I'm talking about today, is, what is it, 40 degrees? Barely yeah. cold, uh, warm enough so it wasn't snowing. Mm -hmm. Cold rain is kind of a pain to have to work in oh conditions. yeah if you're outside yeah. you know you're slopping around in the mud and so forth so um you know so i i could probably think of some stories of working under conditions 
we worked in the ground. I mean, we worked under unsafe conditions, and, and I tried to be safe, but, you know, I know I did some things that technically probably were not... Um, oh. Well, let's put it this way. If OSHA, you, you're oh, familiar with OSHA? Yeah, yeah. If OSHA had driven by, uh -oh. they, they might uh, shut the job down, you know. Uh, nothing radical, but radical, well, I shouldn't say that. Radical enough that if something, if a ditch caves in and you're down 10 feet, oh, yeah. mm. you might as well just keep putting yeah. the dirt in and, right. and, and oh, put great. a little, you know. But nothing ever blew up on you or none of the trucks ever. <laughs> well, I'd be glad. Yeah, I, I, we might have to save. I'd have to maybe think back um, and save it for another time. Oh. Think of the story. But um, no, there were stories. I mean, we, yeah, I mean, the, Christmas parties and stuff where you get together and we probably invariably end up talking about a particular job and, mm. and uh, you, you know when, you, when you're in the midst of it it might not be that much that funny but mm -hmm. when you when it's all said and done mm -hmm. and it's over with and you've moved on then you can, you can laugh catch your about breath it. yeah okay well yeah we'll continue okay we're going to take another break and we'll be back with tom walker Welcome back. We're talking with Tom Walker, who's told us about his 43 years in the Ellington community and helping take care of us all this time. Now, you had something happen in your life earlier. Well, t tell us about that because you've worked, you've been a working right. guy your whole right. life. I'll try to, I'll try to make this uh, short and sweet. So, uh, so I'm 68. And I, I, I only say that I only say that to, for perspective and uh, and context for somebody who may be watching. Um, you know, you, you've heard the phrase "sex, drugs, and rock and roll." I mean, there was a lot going on at that time, and um, and you know, so I I was full speed ahead with all of that stuff, mm -hmm. but I was fortunate enough to uh, recognize, I think I was 18 or 19, that I was going backwards, uh, going in reverse, probably about 100 miles an hour in reverse. And anyway, uh, and I knew, you know, it was not a good scene, and the, and the end result was not going to be very good. Mm -hmm. So I decided I got to one of the things I was able to muster up to this self-discipline and say, I got to stop smoking pot. Mm -hmm. That's, that's one of the things. And, and I had a friend of mine, uh, that just not because we were chatting with one another, but just, he was kind of in a similar situation and he decided that he needed to do the same thing. He was even younger than I was only 16 years old, mm -hmm. but, uh, he was on the highway to hell too. And so one Friday night, um, and during the winter, the basketball, there's nothing to, Ellington, you know, it's, well, it's not really a cow town anymore. It's more a bedroom town. But mm -hmm. anyway, you know, you, you, you're always looking at stuff to do at night, especially on a weekend night, you know. So on Friday night, we're looking for something to do, and we decided, we get on the phone, we're talking, we decided to go to the local basketball game, high school basketball. Ellington always had really, really good yeah. athletics. So uh, basketball, uh, high school basketball sold out, standing room only. So we went to the game, and uh, we didn't smoke pot before we went. And uh, so I don't know what time the game ends, 9 o'clock, something mm -hmm. like that, 9.30. And then, well, you know, too early to go home. So we're, we, uh, we're driving around, and um, uh, my buddy, you know, we didn't know what to do. We, you know, you try, where do you go to meet girls if you can't? You know what I mean? You, if you could pick. There's no hot spot in yeah, Ellington no. when you're. So we're driving around the back roads in Ellington, and he, he says, let's stop. Let's stop and see Mr. Skipper. 
Now, I knew the family because he had a lot of kids that went to, but I didn't know him personally. And so it must have been 1030 at night. And I said, why are we doing this? And plus there was that thing called the generation gap at the time. Mm -hmm. You didn't hang. I didn't hang with people that were, yeah. you know, that could be my parents. But anyway, we, I, I agreed to go. We knocked on the door and uh, Pete Skipper and his wife, her name was Dolores, they were awake sitting in the kitchen, I guess just hanging in the kitchen on around the kitchen table shooting the breeze or something. Mm -hmm. And they invited us in. Hmm. And, um, oh, my buddy, I got to give just a quick backstory. He had, he had gotten stuck with his van the, a week or two prior to that and, mm -hmm. and spent the night in his van oh, and drove down the road uh, or walked down the road on Saturday morning knocked on Skipper's door because he, he saw that he uh, had tractors there and he pulled them out. Oh. So, they, so he had met Mr. Yeah. Skipper. So that was, and he liked him. He mm -hmm. thought he was a cool guy. So anyway, we went in, they invited us in. We, we ended up shooting the breeze till for at least a couple of hours. Hmm. Okay. And uh, we're still good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, uh, we, we, we just sat around the kitchen table talking mm -hmm. and um, uh, I don't even remember exactly what we were talking about, but I, whatever was interesting enough to keep us there for mm -hmm. a couple hours. And his wife, uh, I don't know, we ended up, she said, do you want to pray? Hmm. Okay. And so I remember standing up in, in a circle. I don't know if we held hands or anything, but we stood up and she looked me in the eye mm -hmm. and, uh, and she said, do you know Jesus loves you? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I was brought up nominally Catholic. I knew who Jesus was, but not really, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and anyway, that question was the beginning mm -hmm. of a whole new way of life. It was the beginning of, uh, and I think they must have invited us to church. We went to a church in, uh, I think it was in Farmington called Church of the Living God. Mm -hmm. um, and they were ex-Catholics. Mm -hmm. um, Mrs. Well, she, Mrs. Skipper, she was, uh, her last name was DeCarly, so she was second generation from Italy. Mm -hmm. And Pete Skipper was second generation from Lithuania, and both Catholic, mm -hmm. primarily Catholic countries. And, uh, but they were not involved with the Catholic Church anymore, and not dissing the Catholic Church, yeah, but yeah. They, they, they got involved in this church, a non-denominational church in, uh, in Farmington. So anyway, but that was really kind of the beginning of me starting to think about things and um, uh, mm -hmm. 19, well, it was before I started working there. So this is probably 1973. Mm -hmm. So that was a long time ago. Yeah. And I could riff about, you know, and it's been a process ever since. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was baptized, you know, full immersion, mm -hmm. baptized. Um, uh, we got married in 1977 mm -hmm. and to a good Christian mm -hmm. woman. She turned 19 in May and we got married in July. So that was a little, but back then it, yeah, right it wasn't as unusual as it, as it is now to get married at that young yeah. age. So and after 68 years, things are still hanging in there for yeah, you and everything. Yeah, I mean, right. we, we've been married for 45 years. I got a, we have a 42 year old son and a mm -hmm. 36 year old daughter mm -hmm. and um well this has been you know, we're, we're starting to have to wrap it up but this yeah. has been interesting uh, thank you for coming by yeah, and telling well. us very about well. yourself and helping us out in, in our community and i want to thank you for joining us this is mike may and we hope to see you again thank you <laughs> so yeah i mean that's sorry it's talking now yeah. we're off the can off.